All right, so welcome everybody to GFC 12, Go Format Championships Series 12. I have Lucas here with me today, and uh, we have 118 players for GFC 12. 118? 118. That's very good. Nice to see. So, who are we spectating? So let's see, first duel of the day. Hop over to the bracket here. So for buys this first round, uh, Lucas is gonna have a buy. Carl Waite, Insidious, SDL Killer, La Bounty, The Nano, John Wick, Delinquent, Alpha Yai, Big Llama 67. So, pretty Bro, much. Those are quite some names. Yeah. yeah <laughs> all deserving of uh, the buys with our seating, sure. seating system here, I think, is uh, starting to come together as we get deeper into the season. Definitely working as intended. Let's see. First round matchups. Should we start the day off with Moxies? Sure. Let's see if he's playing. He's not yet, at least. You could just take a look at the the active tables and pick one, perhaps. Sure. So let's see who is already up and going. We've got. There's a lot to choose from. So... How about Mr. Big Noodle? Sure. Let's go with that. Okay. We'll head on over. So. Mr. Big Noodle against uh, Bananakin. Who I love the name. Bananakin or Mr. Big Noodle? Both, but Bananakin is the new one <laughs> that I really yeah, like. Yeah, same. yeah, same. It's it was very fun to say, Bananakin. All right, so Mr. Big Noodle leads off the delinquent duo. Hits a faith, so likely going to be some sort of chaos control. Or Chaos Turbo from the side of Bananakin. There's the book. Book often a card I find myself discarding to a delinquent though, because it has a lot of flexibility, but perhaps not your best card the the first few turns. Yeah, I totally agree. I think it's one of the first cards I discard as well. So Mr. Big Noodle appears to be playing Necro Valley. So some... And we did see Mr. Big Noodle play a Gravekeeper deck in a previous tournament, I believe. Yeah, and it was almost a Gravekeeper like package in a deck. Like it wasn't a full blown Gravekeeper deck either. Sure, yeah. Did you say that? Interesting, interesting. So do do you run out the the Necro Valley here? I think you do, right? Yeah. Let's see if it dare set something behind it. See, so DD it... Assailant yeah. really makes you question what other monsters are in the deck that you're fitting in DD Assailant, right? For sure. I can barely fit in uh, good monsters into my deck. <laughs> but here we are, DD Assailant. And uh, last time uh, I was watching uh, Mr. Big Noodle play, we did make a quite deep run into the tournament. Nothing extreme, but definitely put up a solid performance. And here we see what you never want to happen when you put Necro Valley in your deck. The Greykeeper Spy. The strongest Greykeeper by far. Getting Nobleman. Noodle doesn't appear to fear the Mirror Force or the Torrential. Just a ring though, so not punished, and I think this is a skill you need when playing aggro. Just sometimes you gotta go for it. And Mr. Big Noodle gets paid off here. Was pausing there, so possibly my body is a shield in the hand? Possibly, yeah. And that's a tough break, tough break for Bananakin, losing that 2500 defense by. Sure. Very true. 
This time around, Vigner will not extending a second monster onto the field, so perhaps doesn't have any. It's a bit interesting as well, because you probably would just slam the monster because you didn't play around Mirror Force or Tarantula last turn, so why wouldn't you? Right. Or why would you? And uh, no, Banana King has found a monster to set that they most likely drew for the turn, as they didn't set anything last time around. if Big Nula has a second nobleman or something else to push through damage here. Could also yeah. be that Nanakin had like a second magician of faith. Right, that's what I was gonna say. It. With yeah. with Necro Valley out and Spy gone, how good of a monster can you even set? The Koichi what? is about as good as you can get in that situation. A noodle sets a third back row. So last time around we were playing Royal Decree, if I recall correctly. And this time around it does look like Solemn Judgment is in the deck. Or setting four would be a very risky proposition. MSD snipes the torrential. No need to worry about that anymore. At this point, Big Noodle just needs to finish this game off before Banana King can access their strong synergies. But does not appear to draw a second friend. And that was a Sangan, which would have combined very nicely with the Torrential if that was able to be flipped. There's a Tsukiyomi, so Banana King trying to get off a nobleman here. So that is one of it is going to be successful. That is one of the advantages of a uh, DD assailant compared to some other warriors is the big defense. For sure, yeah, definitely. Does survive that Tsukiyomi, which is uh, fairly relevant even nowadays. Banana King drew Thunder Dragon for their turn. So we know their hand is Tsukiyomi double Thunder Dragon. And I would doubt that their set card is anything too relevant. Perhaps a book. Maybe not a book. Probably would have been flipped. Maybe just blank. Gorilla gonna come down here and wow, this deck looks really aggressive from Mr. Big Noodle. Yeah, Big Noodle's in a good spot still because like even if this Necro Valley dies, he banished the only oh no, we, we did the Dakochi and Sangin for Dark. So it could be a matter of time if that Necro Valley dies for Bananakin to actually swing momentum here, but right now it's just big pressure coming down. Very interesting there not to go for the Tsukiyomi from the point of view of uh, Bananakin, but decided to set the monster instead. Which I... leads me to believe that it was a good draw that they wanted to set, perhaps. But the Regeki break was most likely the draw, right? Yeah, maybe. Or could they have held on to the Regeki break until we found the Thunder Dragon? This is a bit interesting. I wonder which one was the top deck, the set or the Regeki break? Or who knows, maybe the set is the Tsukiyomi, but that doesn't make much sense to me. What yeah. do you think? I would think the set was probably a, a Dakochi, and he's trying to protect to set up a Suki lock with a Dakochi. So they had sandbagged the Regeki break in that case? I think so. Cause it, because the there was Koichi nothing... would have had to be a top deck, right? Right, because there was nothing major that the Regeki break was really could have been used for previously. I mean, there's a lot sure. of life point change, but not any big card momentum spots. Yeah, sure. But at the same time, you, you got to be a bit scared. Very interesting. Pot of Greed, obviously a great draw for Bananakin. Follows that up with Upstar Coblin. Down to 19 cards in the deck, so... Getting closer to answers, but you gotta think Mr. Big Noodle's got a, a solemn set by now as well. For sure. And it could very possibly be that uh, Noodle has a backup Necro Valley in hand. So MST, if it was to be used by Bananakin. Uh, really wants to follow that up with a series. Oh, whoa, Mask of Darkness. Which will be negated by Necro Valley. Very interesting. 
So I would be tempted to have gone for the Tsukiyomi the previous turn to try and run over the gorilla. I don't see why he's setting the mask. Oh, because we had the Regeki break for the Necro Valley. But then we decided to use the Regeki break onto the gorilla. I, I don't think that makes much sense to me. No, like that would have been an okay spot to Regeki break the Necro Valley when the gorilla attacked, get back the Regeki break even. And, yeah, then, so perfect, right? and then next turn, Suki attack the gorilla, right? For sure. It's possible. Or even, they... uh, or even lead with the Tsukiyomi. That's also an option. Yeah, it, it's possible Banana can forgot about Necro Valley. It's not a player we've seen before, so we don't really know their skill level. It could be, or I mean, there, there were still a couple of cards we didn't know they had. Uh, for example, the set card in the middle there for Banana Kin, which has been there for ages. And the second Gorilla for Noodle, most likely off the top. Let's see if Banana Kin goes for the Tsukiyomi this time around. Once again, sets of monster. Did shuffle their hand, so we don't know if it is the Tsukiyomi or not. But if it's not, it was off the top, because... No, wait! Banana King only has one Thunder Dragon now, right, because we discarded one of our Geki Break. So, we're not completely sure. And there's the Mirror Force. Wow. It is the Decree variant of Necro Valley. Very interesting. So, has uh, Noodle just been uh, completely dead to a uh, Heavy Storm all this time? And there is a Dekoichi. Bananakin might be running away with this now. Would appear to be on a Mask of Darkness variant of Turbo or yeah, I mean, Mask one, Block Control, one, whichever. One Heavy Storm can completely change this duel now. I think it's... But did they get there is yeah. the question. Yeah. Because while it might seem as if Bananakin is gonna completely take over this game from now on, and very possibly that's the case, but 300 life points, the against... margin for error is so small. <laughs> against a deck loaded with 2000 attack monsters. Wiseler decides to set the Dekoichi again with the Tsukiyomi. Let's see how many back row they can put behind it. And funnily enough, we're almost in the territory where it's... If Noodle draws the storm, maybe that's going to be better. Wow, does not have anything to protect themselves? Alright, let's see. Noodle. So, jeez. And there's no Sinister or Thunder Dragon in that hand. It must just be loaded with Chaos Monsters and maybe more flips and stuff. So, if I was Noodle... Okay. This is a fine start. So, Noodle is playing Necro Valley, which means it's going to be quite tricky for Noodle to summon two monsters in one turn. So, they can't use their back row or cards like Snatch Steel to clear monsters. Then it's going to be tricky for them to push this last points of damage. Oh, I'll just look at that. Four Delta cards four card left in the deck. <laughs> Still at least so one chaos see. monster, you would Is think. Is there a heavy storm? And probably one upstart goblin as well, right? Yeah. So we have... We gotta find a storm here, right? Mr. Big Noodle in the chat. Uh, knows that he got so so close, but right now it might be out of reach. But if you drew the heavy storm as banana cane, you just slam it, right? Yeah, right. I would. So do we I not have so. it? That's quite unfortunate. They didn't get there. But they still have stuff like Snatch Steel. They still have a lot of cards to work with. So even without the heavy, it's not. It's, they have time to get there. For sure. However, I mean, the likely, yep. 
the traps that are already in the grave is quite a bit as well. Mirror Force is gone, Torrental's gone, Ring is gone, so one Regeki break gone. So a hand of probably Solemns, Regeki breaks, and cards that can't destroy Necro Valley this turn. Probably at least a second Mask is in the deck. Mask of Darkness. There's the upstart. Did this find the heavy storm? Does not appear to be the case. Wow. And this back row we predict to be very possibly double judgment. Maybe Regeki Break, maybe Jar of Greed. Perhaps we fit some copy of uh, Secret Armor into the deck. We'll see. So Noodle has gotten a new chance here. Did just refresh their hand off of the card destruction from Banana King. Was holding onto a Snatch Steel and a Heavy Storm, looking for an opportunity, but Banana King wisely never leaving a monster face up to prevent that play from being lethal. Let's see, if Noodle has a set decree, you flip it here, right? Just uh, for South Solemn. Hmm. Because, I mean, uh, unless Banana King's deck is literally Heavy Storm, Solemn Judgment, Solemn Judgment, then those cards, there is a Solemn behind on Banana King's side. There's a Judgment. This is so close. There's the Kaiko. That's two lethal threats. Only one set monster in the way. Banana King is thinking of summon. Debating whether or not the judgment is Kaiku. Does judgment the Kaiku down to 75 life points? And remember, this is without ever occurring any judgments with the Mask of Darkness. Dear War Lady attacks into the Koichi, Banana King draws out the two cards in deck. No judgments left, but they should have access to a second Chaos Sorcerer, one would think, in their list. And they should have a Heavy Storm. And these combined, together with Snatch Steel, can potentially push a lot of damage. All these are cards that Banana King should have left. However, can with Jar Greed's and Upstar Goblins and Mask of Darkness, something was cut out of this deck, and we don't know what. For sure, for I don't, sure. I would think it's not Heavy Storm, but... <laughs> could... I would think it's not Storm or Snatch. Maybe the second case or sure, but even that seems quite iffy. I bet you one of them was Breaker, though. Very likely. Which is why Very this likely. Necro Valley's been on the board since turn one. Also worth noticing, we have not seen a Mystical Space Typhoon as of yet. Does not appear to be any Knight Assailants in this deck, so quite possibly only the single ton Regeki break. Alright. Noodle passes. One card in deck for Banana King. Adds the Serpent. Let's see. Storm, Snatch, Chaos Sorcerer, attack for lethal. Here's the Breaker. Let's see if Noodle has anything to respond here. Probably doesn't, seeing as we're running Royal Decree. Could be Book, I guess. Would be the one card. There is the Book. So Noodle lets the Breaker activate, which is very weird to me, if they do have the Book. This is a strange situation. For sure. So is Heavy Storm just the last card left in the deck, or it's in the hand, do you think? I mean, it looks like it's the last card. Oh. Okay, so of greed. now you have this to deal 3,400 this turn. Heavy Storm, Snatch, Chaos Sorcerer. Let's go. Does he not play Heavy Storm? It would appear that that might be the case. MST, Mystical Space Typhoon. Does not have the Typhoon. Do they not run Storm or Typhoon in their list? This is exciting. There's a Snatch. And Noodle... Very possibly 
has a royal decree set. It says think. Is this a bluff or do we actually have something? Is it the second book? It is a second book. Wow. But Banana King could have noblemen. We have only used... We but have only used one nobleman. But they but still can't deal 34. <laughs> that's not enough. A Banana King admits defeat? Whoa, that was absurd. I love that game. Wow. That he... was so great. Almost got there with apparently no Heavy Storm in the main deck. Wow. And no MST either? That was insane! Okay, kids, so... When you're at home and you're playing, and you, you're stuck with that pesky heavy storm in your hand all game, and it never seems to do anything. Take a look at these games. Card is a must include. For sure. So, we have seen pretty much the entire deck of Banana King at this point. Chaos. Yeah, beyond a few cards in the hand. Yeah, n not Chaos Control, there's no Metamorphosis, and there appeared not to be any Night Assailants either. So this would be the Mask of Darkness variant of uh, Chaos. And Noodle on a Necrovalor deck has to have a fantastic matchup against Chaos Sorcerer, Magician of Faith, and Mask of Darkness. So you gotta believe... <laughs> Heavy is at least in the side deck, right? I would guess so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's quite unfortunate. You sign up to this big open tournament. It's such a huge field. People can play anything. And you take your chances, right? I'm gonna win the Chaos Mirrors. I'm gonna play Mask of Darkness. I'm gonna play Solid Judgment. I'm gonna cut MST, cut Storm. Just do anything to get an edge in the Chaos Mirrors. And then you're matched up against Necro Valley. Another good so, start for Big Noodle. Yeah, huge blowout there. Sing Shen Hu. I would be a bit hesitant to side that in against the deck running Necro Valley, Royal Decree, and Book of Moon. Yeah, as... that's a lot of chainable and face-up cards that it's not going to help you against. But yeah. is, is this what you have in your side instead of a Heavy Storm? <laughs> I, I, I would hope not instead of, perhaps in addition to. Big Noodle so, gonna press the damage here. Interesting to see Tsukiyomi. I I, I don't like Tsukiyomi here. I, I would have thought that you should definitely side that out if it's in your main deck, and you definitely shouldn't side it in. We know that Banana King is not running Metamorphosis. Yeah, we didn't. We saw the whole deck, and there was nothing that you're really gonna benefit of a Tsukiyomi with, right? So, the main usage of Tsukiyomi is to loop your own flips and or follow the dice restrict and kill the opponent's small defense monsters and thousand dice restricts. Uh, the noodle is not running thousand dice, not running flips. Yeah, the, uh, only, the only other use for it I could see here would be with creature swap if he brought that in. Sure, creature swap is a good one in uh, this kind of matchup. Where Banana King basically only has valuable flip monsters that we're going to set apart from cards like Sangan and Serpent. Although we did just see Tomato as well. So maybe Banana Kin is siding in to... But Tomato is a common side card in these Chaos decks to side in against aggro. Especially good against Necro Valley where mm -hmm. so many of your flips are very poor. Bring in an Adoria package with it or something? Yeah, often accompanied by a new door or two. So let's see. What is Mr. Big Noodle thinking of here? To me, that's a quite big tell that that set card could be Decree. Because why else do you think? If it's a book, you don't think, right? You just set it. Yeah, but he was doing that game one as well. Was uh, taking some pauses in spots where I wouldn't normally, so... Like, I, yeah, did, I actually a... thought he had a, my body as a shield. And that's a good thing to do. Just take a pause every now and then. Mm -hmm. by, by not pausing when there's an obvious play, you, you tell your opponents that there wasn't any decision to be made, and that can reveal some information. But that's also vice versa when there's the leveling. 
And there's a storm, so that's what Mr. Big Noodle was thinking about. Can we profit off of this? Nobleman plus Peter is lethal. There's the nobleman. Tsukiyomi is not quite enough right now. Does not show the beater, so I, guess I would it, imagine. I guess his Kaiku was drawn. Kaiku was drawn this turn. We wouldn't have summoned Tsuki last turn. Yeah, I agree with that statement. So there we go. 2900 damage. Banana King going down to 600 life points. With Fairly no easily. 100 dragons left in the graveyard, I would imagine. And uh, yeah, here you go. You can just, just pure aggression is so powerful. Just putting pressure on your opponents. Because every now and then we're going to have a bad draw and you can just win games. No Noodle decides to deploy the Necro Valley and set the card after having made use of his Heavy Storm. Debating whether to set the third card, or perhaps just bluffing. You could make the read that there's no... Yeah, no, this is a bit tricky. Theory was the heavy storm. And there's the set. But Tsukiyomi looks like it could be lethal unless that's a tomato, New Doria, or perhaps a Tsukiyomi of Banana King's own. Let's see what happens. I imagine Kaiko is going to attack first. Could also have been a spy, of course. And it was the tomato. Let's see if there is a new Doria or if it's just going to grab Sangan or the Koichi. Goes for the Sangan. Would you attack with the Tsukiyomi here? I think so. You gotta deal with this one way or the other, right? I agree. The body in play is probably more valuable than uh, adding the card a bit sooner. But then again, if I grab the Spy, are you happy with that? Because if you can't answer a spy or a reaper, wow, that's a nice one. Also goes yeah, well with spy, tomato. Spies are gone, so he might have been thinking, ah, what's right, he going to grab? Yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah, with the spies gone, the attack makes a lot more sense. I agree with you. But there was the reaper. End of turn, flips the decree. Banana Kid uses a shuffle hand to signal that there's no response. Yeah, so reaper, another card like you were saying with that tomato package to... uh kind of counter the your deck being in a bad matchup against like blade knights and things of the such yeah for sure so let's see can noodle beat the spirit reaper and also interesting question is the noodle live in a snatch steel Big Noodle asking here if Suki can kill Reaper just like Book can't. And yeah, it's a, it's the same. Once it's, it's face down, same. it's uh, not considered a targeted card anymore. Alright, so... Mr. Big Noodle has been known to play Mind Control. And we did see mind control in the last game, so if they can manage to flip the Spirit Reaper face up, that could be one way. Does attack into it. Could it be mind control we're seeing here? Decides to just leave it there. Perhaps going to use the mind control for next turn or just setting up for next turn in case we draw their mind control or other cards with such effects that would make the reaper destroy itself. Banana can does deploy a second face down monster. So this reaper really buying time for Banana here. 
Yeah, and uh, I think Noodle was correct, because as you were saying, the spies were gone. Attacking into the Sangen, I think it was the correct decision, but the Reaper definitely putting a halt to Noodle's offense here. That said, but like an is at 500 life points. And Noodle does have a face of Royal Decree. But Anakin has no Heavy Storm left. I can't think of too many cards that out the Reaper. I mean, maybe they play Exile Force, but it doesn't look like there's any Warrior package, so I would doubt it. So yeah, there's a Snatch Steal. I was gonna say, it's pretty much only that and uh, the mind controls that may or may not be in the deck per side. Probably are. Uh, Banana King has quit the match. And Noodle wins. Okay. So there you go. The Snatch Steel would have destroyed the Reaper and one has to imagine that Noodle would be able to follow that up with a second monster to push lethal damage as the back row of Banana King could not have been used if it was a trap negated by the Royal Decree. So we will... Uh... Very nice from uh, Noodle. Fantasy uh, innovative deck once again paying off for Mr. Big yeah. Noodle. Went just as they planned there. Um, so let's hop into... Can I pick? Yeah, sure. We have uh, Lucas the Heretic against Apoptosis. That's who I was going to pick. Oh, really? Cool. <laughs> so Apop, uh, a casual player in our community. And uh, yeah, I, I just love the guy. Very nice dude. And then Lucas, of course, besides the beautiful name, also uh, a very strong duelist and perhaps among the absolute strongest duelists we have right now in Ghost Format. So, appears we're just starting off a game, whether this is game 1, 2 or 3, I do not know. Lucas leads with Graceful Charity, discarding two monsters, as the Warrior decks often do. They want to have as much back row as possible, decides to use the Heavy Storm before deploying the back row. Does Lucas, and maybe they can summon a Blade Knight to run over this Ninja Grandmaster Sasuke. If we were lucky enough to open a monster light opener here. He does take a pause, maybe considering whether or not to use reinforcements of the army. But no, there's the blade knight. And that's a clean attack. I would ima- oh, that's why. So this is a very nice sequence from Lucas. Of course, I expect nothing less. And this is Often. game one. Okay, cool. Uh, this is a beating. Man, if I was up against Lucas of all players, and this was how the game started. Yeah. Just going into the warrior mirror probably isn't the best feeling against Lucas, right? Sure, but if, if you're on the play, I would still be confident. But yeah, there's no one... Uh, in any matchup, really, I would dread facing more than Lucas. But yeah, especially in the Worry Mirror, Lucas has been tearing apart with that deck. Let's see if they have the Judgment, though. They did. And did we draw that off of the Pot of Creed? Maybe. So that's a good trade for Apop. Forcing out the Solemn, Lucas takes 4,000 life points. But yeah, dealing with a Blade Knight in the Worry Mirror can be difficult. But of course, Lucas, after activating that part of Greed, has two cards in hand. So pretty much any Warrior could run over the Blade Knight here. Or a Kaiku for that matter. Or a Skilled Dark Magician. So one would imagine Apop has one of those. 
And there is a skill dark. And Lucas does not appear to have any battle traps or a ring. So I wonder what the set could be. Could it really like Dust Tornado, Judgment? Well, I would be tempted to flip the Judgment there, to be honest. So yeah, Apop right back in it here. Oh, maybe that's why Lucas let attack go through. That gives him the light in the graveyard for the Chaos Sorcerer. Very strong play. Ooh, There's the reinforcement. And the Dawn well. follow up. Yeah. Grabs the Dawn salute. And as long as he doesn't hit a dark here, then Apop is going to be in a super tough spot. With the mill effect, you mean? From the hand. Oh, goes for the discard. <laughs> Lucky Mesis isn't here. He did hit Hits the dark. The dawn. Oh, wow. Okay, so now Apop has Chaos Materials in their graveyard. And Lucas, with only one back row. Not too comfortable here. One could imagine a mystical space typhoon plus black lost soldier plus beater. That would be lethal. Goes for exile force. No response for Lucas. Apop checking the graveyard multiple times, but does just pass the turn, so perhaps just clog the monsters. And there's the Kaiku, and this yeah. is going to be disastrous for Apop. Can't even top deck the Chaos Monster now, with now, the Kaiku taking out now, the graveyard. Now a skill dark is going to be Apop's, like, big hope. I guess a, a Blade Knight can change things around too, but you got to deal with that back row no matter what. So that back row could be something like a Dust Tornado. That is possible. It is game one, uh, so it could even be a Dust Shoot. Nobleman. Yeah. Nobleman, yeah. Uh, no, I don't think it can be a Dust Shoot, because that would have been flipped. That one has been set for the entire game, I believe. Right. Um, but yeah, this is very rough. And we can see Apop is playing double Ninja Grandmaster Sasuke in the main deck. Which is interesting, fun to see. By no means off the wall, but slightly unusual. Has to set the monster pass, and you'd imagine Lucas has a nobleman here. And if not, perhaps a swordsman. No, wait, the swordsman was discarded off of the graceful charity. Yeah, the swordsman's gone. There's probably not much with 2000 defense and APOP stuck either, though. This looks like it's going to be lethal. Blade Knight first. And I believe APOP should concede here. And APOP does. So, and I, I can't really blame Apop for that one because Apop played fine. I didn't see any mistakes. Yeah, no, there was no glaring, could have did this better type of situation. But uh, Lucas with an excellent draw, excellent play, excellent sequencing, just massacred Apop that game. Apop, of course. Seem to be very clogged on monsters. So in the worry mirror, um, I personally like battle traps. I think those are your best cards you can bring in for a side deck. We also often see cards such as Doberman of Extermination. Uh, some players like to bring in Dust Tornado. And we have seen Cypher Soldier in the past as well. Lucas has played this matchup uh, probably more times than perhaps Apop has played good format. And that's not that uh, Apop doesn't play, Apop does play. But uh, probably not nearly as much as Lucas does. I don't know if anyone plays as much as Lucas does. Yeah, it's, it's, an, it's an interesting topic, and it really goes to show that the people who play the most consistently are those who does the best in these tournaments. Yeah, I mean, the better players consistently do well. Like, 
for you'll, sure. You'll hear a lot of people complain that there's too much luck in GOAT format and stuff, but um... Uh, Yet Lucas wins every tournament. If, if that was the case, I, I, <laughs> I don't think you'd see the same players winning all the time. For sure. I mean, uh, it's only a matter of time if uh, uh, the people dominating right now uh, until people start complaining that uh, there's not enough luck in GOAT format. The good players always win, it's not exciting, right? But of course, we still have those top decks deciding matches every now and then. Oh yeah, we've had plenty of upsets and newcomers on the scene and all that. So. For sure. So APOP taking a, some time here to side deck, make, wants to make sure they get everything right. Up 1-0 in the tournament, now facing off against one of the biggest names in the community. And one would have to feel that if APOP wins this match, wow, they, they could go far for sure. So APOP on the play once again. And you can see there, Lucas using the LRG sleeves. Do you know what LRG stands for? Lifted Research Group. All right. So we're a bit of a team, as I've understood it, who test together. APOP going for the, the Cyber Dragon sleeves, which I must admit, I'm a fan. I do like them, they're pretty cool. Nostalgic, in my case. I like them as well, in the purple background. For sure. Goes well with the Penguin Soldier. Lucas, of course, with the this trademark Dark Magician. When uh, some players see that picture, maybe they think of uh, the anime or something like that. But no, you're in the good for my community. We think of Lucas the Heretic. So Lucas Part gonna get a pure plus one here. Oh, of this is disgusting. Pot of greed and off the breaker. Um, may have been worth activating the torrental there. Depends. If you don't have any chaos monsters, then maybe you just want them banished to prevent Lucas from getting a dark. True, you're also taking the 100 damage, which isn't the biggest deal in the world, but... Yeah, I would say that uh, it's not a big deal. And this is a play that uh, most players would be hesitant to make, to summon the War Lady and set the Torrential behind it, for exactly this reason. Yeah. It does lose pretty badly to the Breaker. Not a, not a card you like to put behind your Warrior Lady. For sure. Because what, what's the situation that's going to come up on Luke's first turn here where he wants to torrental his own DD Warrior Lady ever? Yeah, no. There, there isn't one. And Apop does uh, write so in the chat that maybe they didn't play so well. But uh, that's okay. You make mistakes. And uh, that did appear to be a mistake. But uh, Apop recognized it and can learn from it. And perhaps next time it will be different. Here we can see the Wise Way Ruin trading for the Skill Dark. Skill Dark, of course, being very strong when Blade Knight is not uh, at 2080k. Pyco comes down. Thus, it was necessary to take out the Skill Dark with the Wise Way Ruin. Now decides to set free once APOP has set the card, perhaps top deck a solid judgment. And APOP sets card immediately. Does not normal summon, but leaves free cards in hand. That can't be a good sign, right? Ape Bob holding like double Chaos Monster. So if you flip the force. Yeah, I'm trying to think what could be in the hand there. Yeah, very weird. Is it like Don's Lug or something, maybe, too? 
Yeah, it could be Don Salug. Or it could just be Blade Knights. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean... Just a pair of Blade Knights? A pair of Blade Knights and the Chaos Monster. We've seen crazier things happen. And this is a beating. Is Apop going to take both the hits? No, it goes for the Whisper Rune on the second attack. But wait, can't they? No, your choice if tied. Whew, thankfully. Alright. Apop does get rid of one of the monsters. Yes, they printed the rune right on the card nowadays. And there's some Byra. One would imagine that was off the top. Could not tell if Apop had shuffled their hand. I don't believe they did. I would not attack here. Um, You're attacking into three yeah, back rows nice. or into a light monster. Like, I, I don't think... I think you need to wait a bit. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you're correct. And that's a nice learn play. And uh, Apop does appear, maybe agrees with you. Yeah, recognizes that. Great play from Apop there. Following your suggestions, Scully. And now let's see if Lucas can somehow run over this Sambira. There's the Exile Force. That's going to allow the Sasuke to get through. So if that, tor think... if that Toronto yep. was played earlier, this would be a light and dark engraved now. Yeah, that's very really true. Goes for solid judgment onto the Exile Force and Lucas judgments back and now he's going to take down Apop to 350 unless there's a revival spell. All of the Haunted? No. Apop does get another draw step. Top deck Heavy Storm, perhaps. And yeah, Apop keeps checking the graveyard. You have to wonder whether or not there's a Chaos Monster in that hand. And as you're saying, that Torrential could have been the difference between summoning that Chaos Monster or not. Summons Blade Knight, are we going to pass with a face-up Blade Knight? You can ram it. Ram it to summon the Chaos Monster, nice line of play. Let's see if Apop goes for that. That would be one way doing it. So yeah, I'm calling it. There's a second Blade Knight in Apop's hand. Well, not necessarily. It could be Don Salu, it could be anything, but that would be ironic when you clog the Blade Knights so they prevent each other. And yeah, Lucas is going to let this attack go through. Wow. That can't be correct, right? Oh, and Lucas notices now that the Blade Knight was not large. Oh no. Well, it's fun to once in a while be reminded that uh, uh, of who's the best Lucas, right? So here we go. Summon a Chaos Monster. Are we going to banish the Sasuke or is there a Solemn Judgment? Chaos Sorcerer resolves, so this is not that easy for Lucas. And there's the tribe, so maybe it is easy. There's the judgment onto the tribe, but Lucas has the backup judgment, and That'll that's going do to it. be the game and the match. Lucas moves on after a bit of a misstep there, but does get there in the end. Fantasy to well-mannered players chatting after the game. Sir, did you want to watch Moxies? I'll let you pick again, whatever you want. Okay, how about Smooth Rain against Chopper? Cool. So Smooth Rain is also known as Keegan and is very active in the Edison community. And if you want to play Edison, go over to formatlibrary.com and check out the Edison channel. Edison has been picking up a lot of popularity recently. Play against Chopper, uh, a good friend of mine. Uh, I've featured them a couple of times on my YouTube channel. Uh, they're always uh, fun to chat with, has done some work for the Academy team and probably plays 
more eliminate matches than all of us other eliminators <laughs> combined. But does look to be under pressure here against Matasa, the sapper of all cards, threatening to do lethal damage here. No mirror force, but there's a dust tornado. And yeah, it seems there's a warrior mirror with chopper running Sasuke Samurai number four. Command oh. Knight, <laughs> Axe of Despair. Oh, okay. This is this is a spicy list from Smooth Rain. I like Command of Knight course. a lot. I've been waiting to see this card uh, sneak into the meta. <laughs> it's really sweet, definitely, and it goes very well with Matasa the Sapper, of course. This is game one. Yeah, cool, awesome artwork on it. The fact that it's a fire warrior. Don't see a lot of those. 1900 defense. Boost up your other warriors. Has Your opponent has to attack um, it first, I believe, right? For sure. So the dream scenario is to have the Command Knight in defense mode, protecting the Matasa. Oh, so, there we go. Is this the Darkfire Dragon beatdown? I love this play. Correction. Wait, on... you should go for a Carbonara Warrior, right? <laughs> Depends if you need the Dark. Um, correction on Command Knight. It has to be. You have, they have to attack your other monsters first. Ah, right. Okay. Gotcha. So they would have to attack all your goat tokens. Oh, but the Dark Fire Dragon is going to get there. Very nice. But, so, the upside to going for the... Is it... What is it? Is it Carbonala Warrior? Or... Whatever. The, the fusion monster that is 1500, but a warrior type. Oh, right, for Command Knight. If the Chopper boost. had stuff like a book, and then you draw, perhaps, like, a Command Knight, then yeah. the... The Carbon Armor Warrior would actually be lethal, which is a fun thing. We can see here in the Watchers chat that there's Luck Extreme watching. A uh, good friend of Keegan, also a good friend of mine. A uh, very strong GOAT player, perhaps also among the strongest in the game. Has not been playing too much recently. Alright, so two very weird decks i think it's fair to say well chopper's deck not so much seem to be ordinary warriors with a sasuke samurai 4 thrown in there smooth rain on the other hand i think i saw a axe of despair alongside a few flip monsters in their graveyard that was in there <laughs> so you gotta think that there's at least united we stand and mage power in the deck too oh sure a bit of a ben k deck ish but perhaps not quite as all in opting for matasa the sapper a more solid well runner card that can be good in other scenarios as well apart from going for the otk which makes a lot of sense of course command knight also Allowing the Matasa to attack for 3400 damage. And with the Common Knight attacking as well, that's another 1600, which means that those two together can deal 5000 damage. I wonder if Smooth Rain plays a copy of Last Will. It can summon Command Knight, Exiled Forest, Mataza. That's actually a very fun idea. I don't see how you would fit that engine into the stack, yeah. but it would be really cool and would definitely be something that Keegan, Smooth Rain, <laughs> could uh, could like trying out. And Chopper here taking some time siding because, to be honest, I don't think Chopper has ever played anything remotely close to this deck before. I do like the idea of like using these equips in a different way compared to just like the pure Ben Kai kind of a linear strategy. Yeah, I think this is quite cool. You combine the 42 card deck from Keegan as well. Uh... <laughs> oh, I didn't catch that. <laughs> well, you gotta fit those equips in. Well. Uh... <laughs> Maybe the thought process is that if you play more cards in your deck, you don't have to draw the bad ones. So, that's one approach to deck building I haven't seen before. Sasuke Samurai, an excellent turn 1 play from the Warrior deck. Very cool card. 
the the banana warrior, so to say, <laughs> with the banana on the helmet. And Smithering just sets to and passes. And I really must say, I enjoy watching these early rounds when we can spectate players that we don't usually get to see, like Apoptosis and now Smoothie Rain. Yeah. Who are not known to make it later into the tournament, I don't think. And the No Nose Warrior is going to swing for 1200. No Nose Warrior. Very nice. A quite elegant mustache, I must say, though. Um, but of course, this is uh, gameplay analysis and not um, a fashion stream. Smooth Rain now sets a monster into the Sasuke Samurai. Which is a bit scary. Chopper flips a Trap Master. Wow, that's a card I did not think people were still playing. Yeah, wow. <laughs> and in this matchup as well? So weird. It's not gonna pay off. So is that the Sangen then? Sangen Torrential against the Sasuke Samurai in the set? Makes a lot of sense to me. It is the Sangen. Keegan knows what he's doing. And... That's a fantastic trade for Keegan. Let's see if Chopper can follow up with a beater and perhaps apply some pressure. And is the Sangan going to go get the Matasa? Commod Knight. Awesome. Little attack guys that can deal a lot of damage. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, Sangan does say you ca the monster has to have beneath 1500 attack points, but Matasa, the Sapper, and Command Knight completely ignores that by being able to push more than so. Cliff Air forces out the Book of Moon. But the Cliff is quite vulnerable here. Let's see if we're going to see the the Matos of the Sapper come down here. Goes very premature. Onto the Sangan, which I absolutely love. I love this play. Unfortunate. Trades with the MST. Smoother in thinking here. Quite fitting, I mean, Smitherin always uses the Penguin Soldier avatar, uh, as far as I know. But it does work quite well with these uh, small warriors uh, attacking with their swords. Come on, it does come down and take out the cliff. And 1600 attack is still sizable. I mean, Blade Knight can't run it over too easily, I was going to say, but... Are we going to see a crash here? No, there we go. Chopper sets three cards. Now, if Smooth has a goat here, okay, book oh. will work too. Book is fine. So, God, I imagine that Command Knight is going to attack here. Battle Trap, perhaps? Mirror Force. And I don't think we know any cards in the hand of Smooth Rain. Just passes. Yeah, but I was gonna say, I don't know what's ideal here other than setting another good trap, but... I mean, I know what's not ideal. Uh, <laughs> equips. Yeah. Yeah, and there's the Don Salug. So let's see what bricks Smooth Rain is going to be relieved of here. Blade Knight attacks for 2,000, Chopper wisely setting a card before attacking. Wow. Ooh. Yeah, that's very rough. 
risk a decision not to fire that one off. There's a Tsukiyomi. Is this going to connect? Mirror Force was flipped last time, but Chopper has drawn a back row since then. Appears the back row drawn was not a new battle trap. The use of Mirror Force, of course, signaling that there is not a battle trap in the middle there set from Chopper. Mirror Force? Scapegoat, okay. But there's the judgment, and that's the game. Very cool. So 1-1 one, one now. Smooth Rain so, gonna get to go first. Got to see a I'm lot of choppers. Chopper brought in a lot of like techie side deck warrior cards, but none of them really did too much. It was just the usual things that really brought down Smooth Rain in that game. Yeah, the trap master did seem a bit out of place there to me. I can't say I understand why you would bring that in here. Maybe we just have this full process of bringing it in her side every time, thinking that there's going to be a bunch of battle traps and such brought in from the person side, but even that doesn't seem great to me. So do you side out the Batas and the Equips and just try to play a fair game? Who knows? <laughs> like, what's in the side deck? Um, I think you go for the same strategy still. Like, the one of the big things is, like, if Chopper kept in the Solemns, I think, a big, because uh, what Smooth Rain is able to do is just activate a True Nade, and then if a Solemn's already been played, or if Chopper plays a Solemn, now the life points are low enough that, like, one of these metazas and equipped is game. So if you think your opponent's gonna side out the Solemns, I think might change up your gameplay strategy a bit. But yeah, I can't imagine siding out Solemn in a matchup like this still. Okay, let's see, is that a flip? It is a flip. Iron Blacksmith Kotetsu, a personal favorite of mine. Very strong flip card. However, does lack more than two great targets. It has the premature burial and the snatch steal, of course, when it's flipped, it adds an equip spell. But in the deck Smoothrin is running, it also can add the Axe of Despair and perhaps United We Stand and our Mage Power as well. Some Byra. So this is Smoothrain running all the, the forgotten warriors, the ones that were just not quite good enough. The Kumad Knight, the Matasa, the Sapper, the Sabira. I really dig Bring it. Bring them back here. Yeah, it's really cool, fun to see. You know, I just realized Iron Blacksmith is making Legendary Sword in the picture. The equip card. Yeah, Divine Sword of the Phoenix? No, I think it's just called Legendary Sword. But oh, it's that one? Oh, it, okay. It does look like Divine Sword Phoenix a little bit, but I think it's the card Legendary Sword that does almost nothing. But So that was a good trade here for Smooth Rain, getting rid of the Blade Knight and then eating up the Smashing Ground. But Don Zalug just gonna keep the advantage rolling for Chopper. You are correct, that is indeed Legendary Sword. Yeah, Don Zalug here. Just getting amazing Just pulls on Smooth out. Rain, and Chopper's asked if you want to shuffle both times. Smooth Rain has said no and just gotten prime cards picked out of the hand. So I, I know Keegan is uh, definitely keen on uh, the strategy behind Rock Paper Scissors. I'm not sure if they're if they're all that well adjusted to the, the strategy between the Don Salug discards. But of course, that's what you get when you play a format that you perhaps are not as used to. Sets 2 behind a set monster. Oh! 
So can Chopper punish Spoo the Rain here? Second monster, that's step one. Let's see if the Don Solo gets to connect here. Sets a card and switches the Don. Command Knight? Hang around Mirror Force here. Book. There's a book. What are we protecting? Perhaps, perhaps punishing Chopper a bit here. Maybe it's a Sangan that's going to like run over the Kaiku. I mean, I would imagine the book play double duty there. Yeah, so it's a Matasa the Sapper. Maybe a Command Knight. No. I mean, Command Knight would have lived. Yeah, it's a bit interesting why you book there. It is the faith. So Hoping did you to use draw a better spell. At the Kaiku. Yeah, yeah that, that makes sense as well. And hopefully a better answer for this Don than the Book of Moon. Yeah, Matosa the Sapper does attack directly for 2600, but still can't attack over a Don's Luke. Blade Knight, very strong on this board. Chopper decides not to respect Mirror Force this time around. And there's the premature as well. Targeting the Kaiku. Which would shut off any potential chaos that would be enabled after the Faith hits the graveyard. But that is assuming these attacks go through. And Smitherain does have free back row out of one we suspect is a Book of Moon. Leads with the Don Salug, makes sense. There's the Sakuret's armor. So if he can stop the blade with the not Book of Moon, then Mataza. Hmm. There's a gravity okay. bind. So this was very I, cool. I was wondering if perhaps that was why Chopper brought in um the Trap Master. Because when you right. see Mataza, you do kind of think they might be playing Gravity Bind, but without seeing it first, it's kind of a big leap. But oh, we don't know what game that was, right? Or we do. This is we... this is game three. Now what's game one? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, yeah. For all we know, Chopper never saw the Gravity Bind, but still knew what was up. Very nicely done by Chopper. Nice instinct to research. I don't know which. Uh, and this is going to be book, I would assume. Book's the Kaiku rather than the Faith. Which is a bit interesting. I would think having the book in hand is more useful. But that depends what Smooth Rain has going on here. Perhaps needs the body of the Faith. Perhaps to put equipments onto. This is true, Nate. So that's gonna put Blade back to 16. There's a Snatch Steel. And that's going to run over the Kaiku. Yeah, but so I still don't the quite book, see. The book would have been better book, here. Yeah, the book would have been a lot better, right? Because you would steal the Kaiku and run over the Blade Knight. Yep. And then you also would have gotten rid of the Chaos Materials in the graveyard for yeah. Chopper. Yep. Yeah. That might have been a misstep by well, he... Rain. Of course, we didn't know what we were going to draw for the turn, but... Right, but in general, I can't imagine there's two... I, I think he actually plays meta in the deck. That's very possible. We did see scapegoat with the Magician of I think we even saw meta in the grave game one when we first joined in. Very possible. And now we're top decking, but Chopper is, of course, a card and a half ahead in this top deck war. One Tribe good body could, could give Smooth Rain turn to build up some cards though. 
For sure, but what would that good body be? Like Matasa, Command Knight? Those are just too small. <laughs> Another Zambira? Another Zambira would be a good one for sure. Chopper decides to flip the Call of the Hunter there. Not a trivial decision, I would think. I would be a bit hesitant. That's now a bigger body for Smudrain. Would be very strong without the tribe to be bring be brought back with the Call of the Haunted from Chopper's side. The Koichi, is this going to be Axe of Despair? Is the Choo Choo Train going to get it done? Oh, there we go, 1900 beater. That's big enough to remove the Kaiku. The uh, Koichi, obviously. Oh no! no! <laughs> And the plans derailed there for Smooth Rain. Great match, Mo. Uh, very fun to see from both players. Both players wishing each other GG's. Let's see, sportsman like. So, where are we heading? Um, STL Killer, perhaps? Sure. Do you know Tommy? Um, I do not. I don't either. And it appears Tom is playing Cat OTK. If you're unfamiliar with Cat OTK, it tries to play Rescue Cat and One Turn Kill, as in OTK. Utilizing Giant Shooted, Death Wombat, Goaku Gyre Panda, and Off the Milus Radiant, which we have not seen yet in the graveyard of Tommy. SDL Killer plays Chiron the Mage in their side deck, often alongside Upstar Goblin in their warrior lists. Upstar Goblin, of course, a controversial card whether or not to include in the warrior decks. SDL Killer, one of the pioneers of using the card. Partially due to being able to pitch it to the Chiron, I would think. Chiron, of course, a great card of this matchup, which heavily relies on the level limit area B and gravity bind from Tommy Huta. And here we can see a nice combo, combo. Level limit area, switching the Chiron to defense, where it only has a thousand. And the Panda at 1300 can now attack over it. And if it would connect, which it doesn't, it forces out the mirror force though. It would even be, have been able to inflict piercing damage. So this is game two, but game one was a draw. And uh, right. James Ark gonna join us on commentary here. Hello, I'm here. James Ark is here, the yes. legend, perhaps Thank the, you. one of the absolute greats in the Goat <laughs> Format community. I don't know about Luck that. I don't know about all that himself. yet. But yes, I am here. Uh, but, so we're watching an SDL killer versus Tommy Huta? Tommy Huta. Correct. What do we know about Tommy Huta? I know he's a fan of the, the forbidden user, Maliomo. He is running Rescue Cat, we know that. And we know they are in game two, because game one was a draw. Interesting. We didn't know anything else. I wonder, I mean, I guess I assume Ring of Destruction was the cause for the draw. That seems like the only way game one, but maybe there's some weird card I don't know about. Uh, we did not see game one, but you would have to assume. Yeah. Okay. Well, so Chiron comes in. You know, it's interesting because I feel like sometimes the STL killer is a person that plays a lot of money matches. Sometimes where the decks like these, Panda Burn and whatever, are kind of looked down upon or banned, and like people then are like, oh, they don't know how to. All people that do that don't know how to play against these decks. But I don't know. I think that SDL Kill has pretty good technical play even in these matchups that he's not as familiar with, I guess. So I guess that will kind of be showcased here. Yeah, for sure. And SDL Kill are one of the warrior players who run the Chiron and has been doing so for some time now. Cool thing with have Dust Wombat on the screen just make me think of is like if you're low on life points, being able to ring destruction your opponent for a game if you destroy a different monster and not take any damage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's really totally. cute. That's an interaction I have not thought of before. It's also nice having main deck answer for like the uh, Royal Magical Library deck. 
Right, because it stops the pendant. Um, well, yeah, okay, now we're in game two, game three, whatever you want to consider it. Um, as the Panda Burn player, I mean, traditionally, I think people people think Panda Burn is a pretty fantastic warrior matchup just because, like, they're either forced to contort themselves to have a bunch of answers to the level limit Gravity Bind, although if this is Gravity Bind, he's just getting... Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, SDL has particularly, the way he makes the side deck, a lot of answers for this deck. Yeah, I mean, Cliff, Chiron, additional copies of Dust Tornado, or, or I know at one point SDL Kill was siding Decree, so um, all those things can, can answer. But the hard part about this matchup, I feel like, is even if you have all the ST removal answer then sometimes if they just stick a big panda, they just right. root you down. Can't get it off the board. Yeah, or or just they're able to output so much damage. I mean, this just might be game right here, right? Yeah, I think, I think this looks like it's more of the Rescue Cat OTK than a panda burn deck, really, for right, right, the right. little sure. that we've seen of it. Yeah, no, this is definitely the Cat OTK. This is not panda burn. Uh, yeah. It's often confused between each other, but no, this is the, the giant this true name cat. Rescue yeah. Cat variant. Well, I would say that even is is a little. Um, oh yeah, he doesn't even need to do the full double cap combo because Sto Kill is not at. Um, wait. Oh, okay. No, it would have been it would have been sixty six without. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think the regular cat, even though it's like has its inconsistencies, is even better against Warrior because you still have the. Stall cards. I like every. I like everything with the giant trunade right now. Like force exactly, it, yeah. forcing out solemns to either be activated or go to the hand is exactly. Put your opponent in that spot where they're like, well, I could either negate this trunade, I might lose to what he's going for, or this could just be he could have a dead hand, and this trunade is just to get me to pay half my life points for nothing. Yeah, and I mean a deck that has burn that can punish that too. Ah. <sighs> But yeah. I think the cat and pan cat panda decks, both of them, whichever, uh, are pretty like underexplored and like I don't know, could be developed more scary decks for sure. Yeah, and you can tell that Estia Killa has come prepared, but that's also because players of uh, Estia Killa's caliber, they know that these decks they are strong and they can definitely beat you. And you need to come prepared. And that just goes to show that these panda and cat decks are definitely to be respected. So interesting to see SL Killer being done siding first. One would imagine that Tomahuta has played against warriors more times than SL Killer has played against cat. Well, something interesting that uh, we you know we don't have the full info on, um, but a lot of, um, I, I think, I'm trying to remember who did, v Viffer, I think was the person that did well with it, but um, they do the cat with into the panda burn? Cat into panda burn, or, or whichever. Oh yeah, for sure, yeah, that was that was Viffer, correct. So, so I think that, well, I, I don't think he's on that, but, I mean, maybe there's some thought to uh, him transitioning out of full cat OTK. That um, would be one reason to think during siding, if you well, and, decide whether or not that's worth it. And I mean, one kind of interesting thing that, like, this is why playing, like, playing best of fives, for example, is kind of weird, because I think it is to the benefit of decks and side strategies like this, because it makes your opponent play a 50-50 every time. It's like... If you're trying to play the prediction game of like, are they going to go back into cat or are they going to stay on? Um, it definitely changes the math. But and so the fact that this has gone to a game for it, it's both like SEO Killer has more information about what might be going on, but maybe he's forced to make another 50 50 guess. Yeah, definitely goes both ways there. Yeah. So SEO Killer on the play now. Entering game four, likely to be the decisive deciding game. 
unless we see another ring draw. For sure. So we did see Chopper run Trap Master in the last match. What do you think what? of that card in the Warrior deck? Trap Master, oh, I think, uh, or Trap Monster. I was like, what Trap Monster? Uh, uh, Trap Master. I, I think, it's, I think it's probably better um, against a deck that might play like Gravity Bind or something than, um, than in the Warrior Mirror specifically. I don't like it very much in the Warrior Mirror. I actually used this used Trap Master for a little while when I started using Warriors. Oh, okay, this Cliff Walk. So that's pretty. Insane. Wow. Put it yeah, this this could be backbreaking. He can't After change. That's too late. Yeah. No wait. Hello. <laughs> the ability has resolved, right? If he targets it, then it's damaged. Yeah, yeah. I'll, tell I'll, him. Let, I'll let him know. Yeah. Well, that's like that's kind of why I was confused. I mean, maybe that would have changed that interaction quite a bit because because like. Yeah, I mean, if if he has two chainable, or even just the one chainable back row, um, oh wow, 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 wow. Okay, this is some burn. But you know, actually, like, I mean, without Ojamatrio, this is not representing that much damage, and and Very true. Cliff, Cliff can pop. Like, if he goes, yeah, Cliff can pop either in the damage step or the gravity bind itself. So Tommy Huda actually is on a I would say Tommy Huda is on a shorter clock than SDL kill even despite having all these burn cards. Unless the set is a geometry. All right, so this looks like an awful spot for Tommy. It's, yeah, well, I'm, he's gonna have I, to I, just draw another card. <laughs> he's gotta yeah. just take whatever damage next turn, and if he could draw like a rescue cat, he could turn into something crazy. If he draw sure. graceful charity, <laughs> then he's three definitely of those cards to replace. Yeah, it's a lot of. A lot of potential that, in that hand. There definitely are outs with, as you're saying, Scully. Double last will. Oh, and sets. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't have said a, a thing here. <laughs> well, hey, could set I'm, two. But I'm no. wondering about the ordering here. Yeah, because okay, if he swings with this is what I was thinking would happen. Because if he swings with Blade Knight first, then yeah, yeah Tommy Hood is basically forced to bind. Oh, this is just a replay, right? No. So the Blade Knight no. can attack. No. No, Blade Knight can't attack. Oh, because it's already declared. Oh, it, cool. But but it it makes him gravity bind is the threat there. Like you don't want to. So the you don't want to spend another turn killing the bind. So can't attack here is what you're saying. Correct. I oh, believe. I didn't know, and apparently as the killer perhaps didn't know either. No, I think he knows because because this is what I'm saying is is. Well, he tried to attack it, again. It, it declared... Oh, did he? Yeah. I'm gonna check with the head judge. I'm not sure on that ruling. <laughs> um. All right, so we're going to check with the head judge MMF just to make sure. I, uh, I think he can't, but but yeah, MMF would know. I mean, all I was gonna say, I thought that was kind of the right play, whether he can or can't attack, because, um, like. Okay, in the situation that Cliff attacks first, and then Cliff hits a, a non-gravity bind back row, then he flips gravity bind on the Blade Knight, and the following turn, Tommy Huda could draw either a way to kill Cliff or a, um, a Battle Stopper or something, and SDO Kill would have to play his following turn under bind. And this basically like forces the bind to activate and gets it out of the way. So I think that it's better to do it this way anyway. Sure, I agree. Makes sense. So I assume that since you flip the gravity bind 
after they declared the attack, it negates the attack. Yeah, so MMF is saying the Blade Knight already declared an attack, so it cannot yeah. declare yeah. again. Alright, there's, there's a couple weird cards like that, like Gravity Bind and like later formats, Fiendish Chain, that like don't really seem like you can use them in response to the battle, but you can for some reason. Yeah, and, even, um, even things like Threatening Roar get very, uh, they've, they've had different rulings at different times and... Yeah. Yeah, so whenever you're unsure how something works, just check with the judge hosting the tournament. Just DM and MF directly. For sure. They really enjoy that. Um But what I'm what I'm thinking about what I've been thinking about the past like two turns is Oh is Oh that's good. Is what the Oh that could have really Wait, so there's no battle trap and there's two burn cards. So the cliff Wait, you could probably just summon another monster if you had one, because... I assume he doesn't have one. Like, yeah. Yeah, I mean... because that would have been game, right? Yeah. But yeah, what I'm sure. what I'm thinking about, and what will probably get revealed quite shortly, is what the, um... What his the first set is. is. Yeah, because, because I think it has to be something chainable if he... was thinking that... Okay, Cliff is going to pop one of these. I'll chain whichever it is. Yeah, I thought it was another secret barrel. That was, no. that was a long way of saying I think it's another secret barrel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotcha, gotcha. But yeah, Tommy. So just a to... pair of last wills in the hand for Tommy. He got a mill. There's oh, the ring. Okay. GG. Got a mill. I would mill there. <laughs> for sure. Alright, so SL Killer takes down Tommy. Interesting. Do do either of you want to pick a match? Um, who we got? Let me let me look. Um, scrolling. I'm scrolling through the list. Juve. We got the delinquent. We got the nano. I'd like to watch the nano. I would always be down to watch a delinquent match just to see what he's playing and kind of marvel at that. Okay. Both, both go are good. To, both are good with me. Link with them. Let's go. Okay. There's also the Labounty versus Dazzles is also an interesting match. To me. Oh, I missed. And them. here we go. <laughs> Sorry, oh. the Delinquent apparently had uh, a lot of uh, spectators already. Okay, so he's using a zombie burn. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I, I was preparing for the team GFC with delinquent. Yeah. And uh, that guy, his creativity is boundless. So I don't know I'm... how he does it, but he manages to come up with something new every time. So this I'm is just, game I'm just three. looking at the grave. Okay. Okay. So I'm just piecing together. So, okay. So he could be on a, a zombie rat like aggro list more similar to what he pl what he won with a few weeks ago and you could be sideboarding into some kind of burn variant or or the other way around um so for me he could... for me looking at this this looks like the comic odyssey burn type of deck yeah which runs the recruiter engine and he's using yeah. the zombie engine for the recruiter part of it and it was skill drain right yep well, yeah, you I guys just... uh, put a copy of Just Lacoon into a deck like this. Now it's Skill Drain. And with Skill Drain, yeah, right. but. Gotcha. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah, I mean, this is what I don't know because I feel like you could also. In that Decree deck that he won with, like, you could be siding or even maining some amount of Wave Motion Cannon. Like, I think it's not a bad, like, tech clock card. You know, like if that's kind of already your game plan. Um, because a cool thing that we saw that we've seen with the, like we just saw with like Cliff the Trap Remover and uh, Trap Master is a lot of the extra spell and trap removal people have in their sideboard. Chiron the Mage, Skill Drain turns all that off, so it leaves them down with um, just stuff like Mystical and Dust Tornado for the Warrior decks to really get rid of these cards because they're not playing Royal Decree. Noble and Extermination can't destroy face-up ones. Totally, yeah. I mean, it's always just going to soak up, uh, yeah, an MSG or Dustin. So if you're playing that many continuous cards in general, 
then there's only so many they can have and like there aren't even that many decks that are main decking dust tornado like warriors for sure i would say usually do but even then some people cut them and delinquent's grave loaded with the metal raider counter traps here solemn judgment seven <laughs> tools magic jammer the draft metal raiders draft deck. and it would appear that the skill drain some pyra combination just yeah just can't be <laughs> I'm dealt with. sorry i'm like processing I, I was like trying to figure out the deck, and then I, I'm only just now processing the field that he snatched his Zombira and is now using it with his own skill drain, which is very funny. And probably a poor side deck choice here for CC with Barrel behind the door. It does not work on Wave Motion Cannon. Interesting. I guess I knew that. Maybe uh -huh. they saw cards like Justice Earth and Secret Barrel. It's possible. But now we're not there anymore. Could be. I think Delinquent in his other burn decks that I've seen is mostly just using wave motion and, you know, yeah. maybe some copies of uh, like a magic cylinder and obviously ring. Yeah, it would work. Yeah, it's still awesome on ring. I mean, if, if, if there's a ceasefire around, it's great on that. But uh, ring definitely the craziest combo with barrel behind the door. The combo. So your opponent will take double the damage from ring of destruction. Wow, that is nice. Alright, let's see here. Of all the things Do Barrel we... doesn't work with, you would think Ring would be on that list, but uh... For sure. Right. It is not. So, what could we draw? Call the Haunted? For Excel Force, I assume? That's a start. Yeah, I mean, under Drain. Yeah, but that works. Right, right, right. I'm saying it still works. Um, yeah, yeah. And if you don't know why it works, it's because the, the Exile Force uh, can still activate and as a cost it tributes itself and then resolves in the graveyard where the skill drain does not negate it. If he has Storm here, oh, okay. I was going to say if he like, targets the rat and then he played a Storm, that would yeah, be very that would good. Be great. But perhaps just planning to survive the hit from the rat. Yeah. Yeah, that was a pretty weak uh, showing for that exile force. <laughs> kind of reveal that CC's hand probably not the best here. So well, what can you even get with the rota here? You can get warrior lady and just set it. Set it, yeah. Oh, that's so sad. Well, I mean, yeah, but if you think about what delinquent deck most likely looks like sure you probably can't get over that <laughs> uh, sure. other than having a ring or something and then i mean then you're in a game state where like delinquents drawing to his wave motions etc and like you're drawing to all your stuff yeah yeah so, you, you convinced me this is this could be quite solid because you would think that delinquent probably cited out nobleman of crossout i mean look you're you're a you're at 1800 against a burn deck like i don't really think that any position i would say is like very solid but i mean it's better than i think just like swinging and i don't know i mean you're, you're actually you're pretty happy to see the level limit here even too from cc to like get your opponent on the defense is great as well well, yeah, I mean, in in either way, you were probably just drawing to Storm or, you know, if you have some other kind of blowout side card anyway. Mm -hmm. So, like, now it just is definitely that position, but it's a little tough. The more turns that go by, I feel like it's worse for Delinquent because, like, if Sessi Kochi is only at 18, then at any one of these turns, like, you can draw a wave motion, pr protect it, or keep it on the field for two turns, and then they just die. But the more turns that go by, the more turns that Tikoshi can have a dust tornado, the more turns that um, they can draw the storm. And, like, Delinquent only has two wave motions left out of 23 cards, so if those are not in the top, I don't know, 10, 8, like, then... It's almost guaranteed that they're gonna have an out. 
so one mystical and a dust or one dust tornado yeah. and mystical yeah. already burned for CC here. Right. So it are is either are either of you the, the time <laughs> seals? Do they stand out to you? I don't get what they're even what this deck is even doing to be honest. It looks like warriors with time seal. Warriors with time seal and barrel behind the door. I mean, I guess the barrel is sided, but but yeah. yeah I mean, time seal. Um, hey, some people run jar of greed and warriors. Yeah, time seal doesn't sound all that bad compared to jar of greed. So the wave motion's here. Right. So it was in the top <laughs> three cards. Um, um, four cards. Now CC is in a hurry. Yeah, two turns. Also, very possible that Delinquent has another counter card set with what we see in the grave already of Solemns totally. and Magic Jammer. But two Solemns are gone, so maybe not. And Delinquent is the kind of guy that maybe you would think that Magic Jammer, Seven Tools were quite narrow cards. No, Delinquent, he, he could play a full playset that's not out of, out of his range. Oh! It's like a tribute, tribute set, Ryukoki maybe, yeah. Okay. Interesting, cool. That's what you think that's... when Guardian Sphinx gets flipped next turn? Well, or like... This and Chained does... Book of Moon? <laughs> Swordsman does kill it, but yeah, I mean, it's only one turn anyway, so I don't know. And yeah, the MSC and the Dust are gone. He like needs to draw Storm. Nobleman is live now? Right, exactly. We're but... this thing. Yeah, I mean, it's like noble. Like, if he had something like nobleman, nobleman MST. No, well, the MST is gone. But uh, uh, oh, like, sure. nobleman swing with a sangin, uh, bring a kaiku. You know, something like this. But you still die to the wave motion, right? Well, they would tie it. You could uh, if you had ring. Oh so. right, gotcha. Swing with the sangin. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah, I'm I'm just throwing out cards, you know, but like yeah, that's yeah, how. yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Other than other than a, a ST removal, storm or or dust on the thing, but uh, oh, the link yeah. wins. I mean, all all that being said, I think it was pretty likely that yeah, that was just gonna be the. I mean, I love watching the link with stacks, not necessarily when they play out, but. Uh, I love the decks, and I love Delinquent, and he's such a cool person to have uh, in the community. Fun yeah. to see someone like, innovate almost every time, and often, very often, doing very well. Definitely someone to look out for. I'm going to look at this replay, because I'm very curious about the deck. So, do we have, uh, do we want to watch Moxis now, or Ghost Rider? Please? Is that... Is that Zazzle's the Bounty game still up? Because I would definitely watch that. Sure, I'll check. Looks like Zazzle. it is. It is. Oh, Most no. The no, Bounty is calling us a ceasefire? No, no, no. They finished. Uh, it, the ceasefire is. Okay, so that's a, new, that's a new one. Oh, wait. Okay, this seems kind of interesting. Oh, yeah. What about. versus Fusion? Let's watch. We'll put the Bounty's game on. Okay, sure. I was also going to say, I believe Nats Boy 2010. Is playing and uh, that's Austin Coleman, right? Or no, 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 no. Sorry, Nats Boy was Nats Boy was like Austin Coleman's name for a while. The kid that won in like 2006. That was the handle he used, but he didn't win in 2010, so we I don't know what. Fusion yeah. against Labounty going here. Okay, so it looks like a warrior mirror. Oh, there we go. And Labounty just Fusion. lost game one. Showed. The Exile Force there, I believe, and Labounty admitted defeat. And let's see, so, so this is winner's round three. And we saw a... Uh, what's it What's it called? Evacuation device? Compulsory evacuation device in the Greer of Labounty, I believe? Yeah, interesting card to be main decking. Um, I, I like it still against Goat Control, but... I don't know about in a main deck. Well, yeah, if he's expecting more chaos control, I guess it's fine. Yeah, but who's expecting thousand dice decks, like overall? I don't know. Blue bounty. <laughs> it's a it's an interesting tech choice for sure, and definitely not a not a bad card. It's just it does let you like end show. the game faster compared to a book of moon in the same spot. 
Yeah, totally. I mean, just putting them behind on, on the face, and then it gives you another turn to draw a Nolman or something, too, or just put too much damage for it to even matter. Yeah. Similarly to the Phoenix Wing Wind Blast, it can be used to snowball. Also against Spy, it's like not, I mean, it's not like good, but like you, you find yourself... That's another way like, of outing it. Exactly, and like sometimes you are just kind of piecing together like a bunch of like not great one-for-one -one removal, like a snatch, a BLS remove, and a compulse. I mean, we, we've seen people play Smashing Ground, which yeah. similarly to compulse is a fine card, but you know, you, you gotta run out your 40 cards somehow. That's true. Give me one moment. And James, are you in the always summon turn one camp for Warrior Duck? Um, I don't think I'm in the always do anything for Warrior Camp, but I think you do usually have to use your normal summon. I mean, this sum summon Kaiku is like one of the least good things you can do yeah. <laughs> in, in the Warrior Mirror, but... Um, it's still okay. I mean, I don't know. I think probably more people, right, are in the, like, sort of, like, conventional wisdom. Like, you might as well use your normal summon. Especially if you're, like, trying to turn on Blade Knights. You don't want to get monster flooded out. I've been kind of, like... Because, like, the downside is, like, say you had a... You drew a Roto or a Blade Knight right here, and then your opponent set a monster. You'd rather have that than the Kaiku that you put on board and... Sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I think... Not to mention I it being vulnerable to being... Like, it could have got attacked by a skill dark or something here, too. Totally, a, a boost blade. Yeah, I mean... Uh, I, yeah, more often than not, you got summon. I mean, it's just... Especially if you have multiple monsters in hand. If if you... If you're, like, holding a graceful, and then you... Because you know you can discard them, or, or uh -oh. you... It's yeah, definitely one going. of those plays where I'm usually not sure what to do turn one like it's like all all situational based yeah. on the hand based on what they're playing but i mean it seemed fine here um because also like he he went kaiku set mst so like and i know that fusion play is this small uh grave keeper package and maybe little bounty knows this as well i don't know but like a, an answer that you could think of to this kaiku set is like necro rally summon assailant in which case, um, MST would be really good, and like having that other monster on board would kind of bait that. Mm -hmm. But all this being said, now we're it was looking kind of bad. Yeah, the bounty's got to dig to an answer for this board here, and it's not going to be a chaos monster. Yeah, but like, I I mean, I would say that before I saw the graceful, I was like, okay, now he's got to out mon multiple monsters, blah blah blah. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of ways that this thing gets. So now, up, so now the Chaos Monster oh is live because he had the answer for the Snatch Steal. Wow, what a change of momentum. I think he is pretty fine to swing here, and I think that's what he will do. I think he can swing over that, five. What if that's Faith for the Snatch Steal, though? He's playing Necro Valley. Um, I think you were right, but I still would be afraid of it. <laughs> like... You well, play, I, you I, play it safe. I might be afraid of like kinetic, you know, cyber soldier. Um, yeah, you play it safe. That gives you like all you got to do worry about is a spy and defense, and you got rid of yeah, that mystery sure. card. I think it just it just would have it would have been the same position, right? If that was a set spy, he would have ended with a monster and defense on the board. So, but yeah, I mean it. It's whatever. It's just like if he smashings the. BLS here or something like or exiles it, then you gotta search for, for an answer for the spy. That's probably yeah. Li leaving the spy is is real because that is the bane of the warrior's existence. But well, I don't. He didn't have a way. He didn't have a way to not leave him with the spy, but it was a better chance of it. Okay, I don't sure. know. It's a million spies, so. If Lebowney has a solemn set for either of these two cards, then he's probably in a pretty good spot. It's interesting to me that he, banished, that he banished the face down there. 
because like what is it going to be another spy with like no targets left in deck like i mean he might have like a i think he plays like one spear soldier or something like that but like i feel like you could banish the thing that you know is the spy i don't know whatever i think this game was like super one anyway so it doesn't really matter but like... oh you know what else it could have been though is it's a guard sure yeah, keep guard. sure that's fair that's fair about the sportsman like shows the judgment yeah maybe maybe playing around guard in both those positions is something that i wasn't thinking about i i think i just happened to know um his deck mm -hmm. and i believe he does not play those cards but i think uh, ov overall you're better off in a spot like that playing it safe than sure but yeah, like you well, said, yeah. if you if you know what your opponent has, like you said, you know the deck, then it's a pretty easy decision. Well, it's it's a good thing to consider and think through it because, as you're saying, Scully, most of the time banishing there is just the safe option, but that doesn't mean it's necessarily always the best mm -hmm. option. Yeah, I mean, like I keep saying, I think that game was like super one for Labounty anyway. So it's like the exact line that you take in those final turns when you're stripping them of resources is kind of whatever. But by that logic, <laughs> if you're saying that it's so one, then why not just play it safe? Because maybe they have something unexpected set face down. Uh, I mean, you're right. I don't know. It's good to play things safe. I think that the way he did it, depending on... Like, his, he got stormed for, like, Dust Tornado, and I don't remember what the other back row was, so maybe that depends. But, like, like I was saying, like, if you left the Spy on board, and then... Like, either way, the way it played out, he was going to end up leaving a spy on board, but... Yeah, but we didn't know that, right? Right, but he didn't know that, so I think there was a pretty decent chance that, like, the set monster in the first time that he summoned the BLS could have just been, like, a set, like, Don's Lug or something, or... Yeah, I, I or... agree completely. I would also so, make an attempt to try and clear the spy. So I'm just... And so I was just saying, like, if he did have a way to kill the BLS, then it leaves him without an out to the spy. And so, like, yep. giving a better chance. So, so, like, I don't know, like, you can... I don't. I just don't know if the characterization of like playing it safe is exactly accurate because like sure. it's not safe if you just end up giving your opponent a bunch more turns because they're able to out your BLS and you don't have enough to the spot. But nonetheless, we're on to game two. It doesn't matter. Game I think both three. plays were fine. Game three, not game two. So I like the small warrior package that we're starting to see pop up, or I'm sorry, gravekeeper package is starting to see pop up in these decks because it's able to be aggressive and defensive at the same time where you have like these bigger than your opponents monsters with the spies for the warrior match and being able to attack over things i'm just not sure how much that dependency on necro valley for your 1500 gravekeepers is really going to end up coming into play spy is just disgustingly efficient i'm gonna be honest i think it sucks <laughs> yeah, i just I mean, like it's got that weakness right of like Last you time said, I was cannon. commentating, I, I, I wanted to try out the Great Keeper Spy in the Warrior side deck, and uh, I, I thought this is going to be great, this is going to be revolutionary. <laughs> and for some reason, James wasn't uh, so confident <laughs> that it would work out. And uh, then to my surprise, it absolutely did not. It felt really poor. Well, <laughs> well I feel like that's even different. Like, siding a spy, siding spies, oh, this is weird. Like, you're taking. I feel like this is just like losing like if you're already a little bit down you might as well try to like rota for the blade and swing over the dump i don't know but maybe you have stuff in hand you really don't want to lose but i don't know i just think you like with the the uh great fewer package like you can't play bls you um are giving up that weakness to to nobleman and like to flip you know you like even though like spies the ability to play defensively is good then but you're making all those cards that are normally dead live. And like, 
Necrovelli is just such a bad card to draw when you're really low in resources, like when they already have a monster on board, when they've already cleared your monsters. Like, I don't know, I just don't really... I don't think it does anything that the Warrior deck doesn't already do. Like, it gives you access to more 2k beaters. Like, you could play a Berserk Gorilla if you wanted to. But, like, I think that the times that, like, Necrovelli gets, like, a full lockdown off is kind of whatever. Anyway, Fusion does well with it. Happy for him. It's definitely interesting. It's going to be fun to see how these decks develop and whether or not we're here to stay or just having a, a good week. <laughs> Level 2 gets in there for the damage. Fun to see. What do we think of this? I mean, it's interesting then that like... I mean, I guess this is where there's some benefit. Again, again I don't know if the bounty knows this guy's list as well, but um, like Swordsman is maybe a card I wouldn't really want to keep, like because they, it's a fine line because like you want some cards to deal with the spy and to deal with other potential face downs, but they definitely aren't relying on that. They definitely play much more like a warrior deck, you know. So Swordsman is maybe not a card that I would really want to have. Um, but like, yeah. now he's going to be at 15. He didn't have the like, Necro Valley to go with this last turn. So unless he can stick another over 1800 attack monster. Then... Swordsman level 2 and Ninja Gromas and Sasuke creating the ultimate oh. block here. Well, that's a oh. great summon here. Thinking. I mean, if he has this on, I think you kind of got to use it. Like, he yeah, didn't set, he didn't set a back row last turn. I mean, maybe he's thinking, does this guy... Have preemie? Have a... <laughs> yeah, or, or a bit like, you know, he plays the Necro Valley stuff, but it's like, is he crazy enough to play Revivals and, <laughs> and or BLS? I don't you got to assume they don't. I would assume they don't either, but then this is like the type of shit that you lose to. <laughs> I don't know. And then you talk to your friends after, and you're like, I lost the guy who played revivals and gravekeepers. And... But you flip the judgment. There, there's no. There's. Right? I flipped the judgment. You flipped the judgment. Yeah. yeah. So. What would you think? I don't know. Yeah, okay. Levante just thinks it through and decides. It's oh, good. It's good to. Should lose another 500. Yeah. Oh, yeah, good job. Definitely draw. shouldn't. Uh, shouldn't uh, blame the players for thinking it through. Yeah, I mean, in the. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. I think and that even in these really low resource situations, you just want to. Like, obviously, you're not. It. You don't have any other pieces of interruption, so it's not like you're thinking about that, but like just thinking through, all right, if I do this, really what can happen after? Like, yeah, it's always pause for a moment. Always good yeah, to it's no harm. And uh, here we can see Labonte definitely being paid off for thinking through. <laughs> yeah, he uh... thought the he thought the pot of baseball at the top of his deck. Yeah, but there you go. We, this is what separates the great players from uh, us mere mortals, right? <laughs> Just taking that extra pause to really think and come up with the winning line of play. So, yeah, this makes sense because, like, he summoned the Spear Soldier knowing that it might get dealt with with the Battle Trap and then, like, kind of baiting the other summon and, like, held the tribe in hand. He then drew the Sakura to for turn. Yeah, the, the story adds up. Story adds up. So, um, can we deal with this, this board? Guess we'll find out. Depends if the drawn was a battle trap and if he can Maybe even boost it. Maybe try to bait the torrential there. I don't even know if he'll be able to boost this up because. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Maybe try to if, bait the torrential. If the other card in hand is almost like the card that he held in hand the turn prior is almost certainly a monster than his you, drop or turn you, you really did know this duck james i i did not think you said oh he should have summoned blade instead i was like he must not even have blade to have done that exiled play but there it is there it is but i guess maybe it was in hand i don't know i think the, he's just afraid of the back row i guess right that was a weird right, spot which, 
Okay, oh. well, maybe that was the draw. I don't, I don't know. Oh, no attack. I would attack Whoa. there because, I mean, this is well. This is kind of like the exile thing again because it's like, I get that you're taking a risk, but it's like. Are you really more likely to win this game by waiting longer when you're at 600 and like he still has ring? You know, it's like, it's like, yeah, you no, just, I, I your, want this game to be your over. breaker is gone. You don't really want to play heavy. I guess you don't care if you play yeah. heavy, but you're right. I guess this heavy is a very good. fine line. This is like such a tight rope that you're walking, and and you know, like, Labounty plays compulse, and like, if he's true, yeah, like, that's a good point. The, the margin is so small. That I just I just want to pray that they don't have anything because for every <laughs> exactly. because because it just was be. it just was the pot into Kaiku and a face down and that face down like he's gonna set whatever face down he draws there anyway so yeah that could be anything yeah but I don't know I it's mean that's like, a tough decision no matter what though it's a tough decision a hundred percent and and like more people need to so he here's a. I think probably the best reason that he should have attacked. What if he just drew into something that made Blade Knight dead somehow? Yeah, that's what well, you're saying. There's so many draws. Like, what if... I don't think there's... I mean, he's just going to have to put another monster on the board, I think. But Yeah, I guess there shouldn't be anything that could. Because even if it's Necro Valley, he could always destroy his other Necro Valley to play the new one. Yeah, and even then there's... An, like, unless it's double Necro Valley. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. He could play over there. Oh. Well, I guess this is this is some kind of argument against what we're saying, because that maybe you can outdraw your opponent. Sure. <laughs> well, yeah, that, and, that, and that's a thing. Just... That is. I wouldn't thing. call it outdrawing. He just drew a card. Yeah. Well, I mean, it draw a better card than they. But, do. but the bounty drew pot and graceful. So. <laughs> but see now, now this is messed now, up. Now we're not <laughs> dead to a single battle trap anymore. Well, now you're not dead to a single battle trap, but like. Oh, okay. Oh, well, whoa. He, whoa. Sometimes, he just, sometimes he just slam. That's so... so that was eat. very nice. Oh, well, very the force nice. was gone. The force was gone. Okay, right, right, right. The force yeah, was gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Levante didn't have a single battle trap. There you go. Yeah. Very cool. Interesting. So, who do we want to watch now? James, do you have anyone mm -hmm. you want to watch? Um, there was someone that I saw before. Hold on, I'm scrolling through. I'm scrolling through. I'm scrolling through. We do have the Nano still. Sure, sure, we can do the Nano. Want to go fun. with that, Scully? Yeah, let's yeah, go with that. Top in. All right. I guess Wise Infinity, ever a cool guy who also has done some work in the Academy League. I believe. Mind control hits a Dekoichi. What do you think of mind control? Oh wow, Faustal is restrict. On the side of Wisely Infernity. Cool. And Subwarg. So it seems Subwarg? like... It seems like the Nano is running a deck pretty similar to their, uh... Recent second place list. Game 3. This is game 3, okay. Yeah, I mean, that oh. explains why my control's making appearances. Se second place in what exactly? Sorry, I'm a bit out of the loop. They got second place at Clash of the Champion. Um, champions. <laughs> um, which was like that invite only tournament. Oh, why is it got second place in that? No, 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 the Nano, the Nano got second. Oh, the Nano did. Oh, so you're saying the Nano, okay. Yeah, the, and na they had this, the Nano. The, the Nano kind of goes on. Um... I would say like a curve of playing innovative, fun decks for a while, and then just brings out the chaos again once they're ready for their in to get their invite and such. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Still in front of it, unfortunately, <laughs> picked the wrong time. So, interesting deck from Weisel here. Those Zaborg, skilled white. Yeah, that's the that thing is... that, uh, I thought was exciting. I this like Skilled White. Like, uh, the Koichi <laughs> lost, because even when we mind control it, you still get the body back, and that's a quite solid body. 
Yeah, my control is a very um, tricky card to both use and play around correctly. For, For sure. sure. Alright, uh, so... The Koichi attacks... I mean, the Nano was up, what, oh. five, four cards here, so... I'm feeling like Once they are. The game. Well, Rain, they, Rain, I'm just feeling like they're in a driver's seat. Ring is, is gone already. Yeah, they, oh, I was going to say they just saw them so, and then some another monster or something. Chaos monster here would be lethal, but already BLS and Chaos sorcerer in the but graveyard for I'm, the. Non summoning a Dekoichi here is also lethal. You know, it's like they have like. Yeah. And they're, they're at twelve cards in deck, so I think that. Thirteen hundred. Oh, oh, actually, all, all the coaches are gone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And Maybe no knight is sailing on that discard. So it's like it's like breaker. Uh, oh no, so breaker is not too. Actually, not I don't know if there's breaker too, too many gone. cards. That... Could be a tomato. Could be a spy. Yeah, tomato. Sure. Spy is not lethal. Spy Nothing. is not lethal. Correct. Needs thirteen hundred. And yeah, missed. Don't even know what they could have hit. Right. That's what I'm saying. I I think. Oh well, they that they hit. Snatch. Nano might not have realized it until started drawing. <laughs> but but they had Sinister TDTD, so I mean Yeah. yeah. And their their deck is like It was time to card crap. destruction regardless. Yeah. For sure. So and this is setting, such like... a strong spot, you would imagine at least one of those is the third solemn judgment. And heavy's gone, <laughs> so Yeah. Yeah, so... so 70, 750, and uh, Wise and Infernity does have a fresh hand of cards. Right, their ring's gone, though. I mean, I think they would need, like... Ring's gone, Snatch is gone. They would need BLS, and they don't have that, so... Oh, main fist is the escape code. So I gotta think the set card is possibly Apprentice Magician? <laughs> okay, there we go. But that okay. don't matter too much. Right. <laughs> uh, Royal Flesh. Very nice. Uh, why is it the uh, MST? But uh, activating the scapegoat still wasn't enough. That was a fun one to see catching Nano winning. So, is there any? Um, I feel like these are all matches in the previous round that are getting finished up. But are there any from the round ahead, like the? Honestly, I haven't even looked at the bracket. I'm, I'm looking at sure it right now. One up. I'll take a look at the bracket. Look at it right now. That uh, I mean, Fusion is against Motor City Grinder. SDO Killer against Fresh Zero. Um, we got Lucas also playing. Lucas also. So I, w I would be down to watch one of those just to keep up with the... Oh. There's also a, a losers match that, to me, is interesting. Uh, Taz against Danji Boss. Danji Boss. Lots of options. Let's go Let's... with Lucas. Sure. sure. Always a safe choice. Definitely. Oh wow, Gors and the the Blackwing profile picture really does match quite nicely. So one part of greed was the play from Nihiru, followed by T set pass. Lucas now has to respond. Pumps off the Blade Knight. Sure. Ring, Ring. is flipped. Ring safest turn one set. Possibly could. So let's see if uh, Lucas did have the nobleman. Did not, it would appear. Is this a faith? That would be strong. Storm. Judgment. Still a good trade for Nihiro. Faith let's again? See what the face done is. Oh. Blade. Oh, oh. Wow. Oh, right. Leading with Storm, also. Maybe. Maybe now he has, just has a way to lethal. I mean, maybe the Trina would have just resolved. So. Reasoning. <laughs> Lucas won game one. Right. So I would say four here because I'm bad at this game. 
Um, I think I'm saying six, so I don't just lose to Jinzo in a summon. I would say four. He's at three thousand. Anyway. Yeah, you Sorry? lose. You lose. No, you lose if they hit anything. Yeah, exactly. You could even say five just to hit the Thunder Dragon, right? <laughs> That's uh, like. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if they're playing Thunder Dragon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying if you see it. That's. It's probably the same odds for everything. Like, if they're on the two crane version and the set is the crane, um, then they have one That's of everything. That's true. If the so, set is the crane... I'm calling six. I would probably, I probably call five. four. Oh, oh, it's the serpent! <laughs> Tribute summon for Deepak. Right, the, no one should play in this deck. Um, oh, okay, Whoa. put him to 4k. So maybe, maybe, there's, some, maybe there's some hope for... Maybe we just don't have anything. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say, because it could be this set Facilier, and if that's the case, then I think it's a lot better to call four, because they have two to three fours in deck. And here we go. Beat but them. I guess the green was the draw. Let's get it. Lucas down to a thousand. And the four cards in Lucas' hand, three of well. those were the sets that was bound to Thank you to Poo Poo the Swine for the 12-month full year... Uh, Prime subscription. Shout out to the swine. Uh, is um, that your, uh, your, your friend, Scully? Yes. Yeah, nice. He said, I want my belt. <laughs> Thank you well, for reminding me. Uh, what, yeah, I mean, the thing is, here, if he doesn't have a monster... We did keep one card in hand last turn. Totally, that's... That's very true. For all that's worth. Could be a chaos monster too. Could be anything. Sets a monster, wow. Oh. The no. So what monster do you set there? Don't look. Just... Yeah, Exile. don't look, right? It has to be. Don't look. Excel you with some maybe not. I don't know. Did you worry that you could also set it? But I don't think it's gonna matter. You could, but I don't think you should. Well, no, I think it's probably better to set where you live, because what, you run over the facility and then crane banishes. That's fine. Right? No? Uh, Fair enough. If you can stall, you'd rather stall and then draw a feeder to kill. Um, this looks... Oh, MST? Oh! oh. He, did it. he did have it. Wow, what a god. I wonder if there's any... I mean... I think that it would be hard for me to imagine playing around MST Mirror Force by switching out of defense, but... Yes, it would. It would be. F in the chat for Nihiro. <laughs> Definitely F in the chat moment. Damn. That is... I gotta bring it, looked like he won, it looked like he won this game. I don't know. And... Nihiro definitely felt that they won the, that game. <laughs> Dude, I felt that they won that game. Yeah, I would have been a little devastated there if I was in that position. That wasn't just a, it's not game, that was, it's a, wow, I just lost probably now yeah, moment. Yeah. But, I don't know, maybe there's still, because, like, reasoning, or any Chaos Monster here, swing over the Blade Knight. Also, they have Sinister, right? An 11 yeah, month I mean... streak for the subscription from Lucas. Wow, you're almost almost at the year as well. Oh, Thank okay. You. So maybe there's still maybe there's still some stuff here. My pleasure. Okay, so 200 life points is not a lot. No, it's in fact very few. And very Chaos few. Monster Defusion is still alive. Yeah. Well. Meta into Senshi. There's no <laughs> second mirror for us. Do it. Come on, attack. Don't see any I metas. Think. I would think they're playing meta with the Sinister build, but maybe not. I think I they're mean, playing meta, but... As well, so yeah. If you Very just defusion here, I don't see how this is not game. <laughs> Torrental? <laughs> yeah, Torrential is... But at, you would have to have, pardon the phrase, but balls of steel to not torrential this, right? Because right. they could just swing over the... Do you I know the think... name of the player we're speaking of? You really would have to have a strong 
a strong, I don't know, mindset, whatever. He's the right, heretic. Let's see here. Goes for the defusion. If he does turn to here, that Is would there just... a ring? They I'll say, yeah, ring, right? ring now just makes it a... Tie. Yeah. Tie? That wasn't there before. That's all true. Alright, alright. But I would still go for this. Yeah, sure. I mean, just from a spectator's point of view, this is exciting. Oh! And that's the game. Game free. Graceful Charity was a good, a good draw, let's say. Graceful Charity, a good draw. Only the most expert analysis here on mm -hmm. goodformat.com. That's if you want oh, just like a loop of me saying like very generic things about your games, like, wow, he had that, then that's why you subscribe. But that that's my job, right? We bring you in here for like the the actual analysis. There's I'm no no. The void, I, right? I turn brain off. I just color commentate. Whoa, MST beer force. That's that's what. What a maneuver. Yeah. Whoa! The good old one too. All right, so Nihiro was not happy about the MST, but all the more satisfying in the end, winning the game. <laughs> so, what are we looking to do in this matchup as the warrior deck, James? What do we say? Uh, win. Win. All right. <laughs> I don't think they side much for this match at this point, right? Dust shoots. Well, yeah. I don't know. It depends how how scared you are, <laughs> because I think there's people that don't side very much against Reasoning Gate, and they're just like, I'm just gonna beat them down. Yeah. I. I Either they I draw don't, it or they don't. I don't respect Reasoning Gate. But Whoa. cards that people side are something like maybe a Jaugen or a Stein or a, or a Dust Shoot if, if you don't main the full copies or Magic Jammer, not so much in Warriors, but still it's okay. So Magic Drain, Threatening Roar. Eight? I would hit him with an eight. Six, right, six is also a thing, sure. Just the Jinso is a huge issue, which, yeah, fair. <laughs> oh, there's a serpent. There you go. That's how you always hit with your reasonings. They Dude. never guess one. I don't they understand. They never guess one. Just I don't understand the point of... But hey, now we're... I mean, now we're living. Just pure value. Once you could you a serpent. You could sell him this for sure. I don't think that would be crazy. Yeah, I yeah. think that's fine. Yeah. I always sell him aggressively in this matchup. Granted, I yeah. die immediately afterwards, but... Well, you can kind of tell by like the order in which they do things, you know, it's like if I yeah, thought sure, I was sure. going to get blown out by a storm, but they would have stormed first, you know, so. And this has to be a great spot for Lucas, right? I would, I would say it's a pretty great spot. Oh, Ooh. now it's a very great spot. So the serpent bites no the dust, but now and the, and the light dimension target. fusion can be used to tribute some of your air knights. <laughs> Yeah, true. Which would be able to take out the Kaiko and draw a card, so, you know, you, you take your wins with your losses, for sure. One counter away to skill Dark, oh he can. Now summon Dark Magician from the deck or graveyard. Let's see, we need some snap steal. we need another reasoning. I mean a storm would be nice. I'll go for well, a storm. Yeah, but... You would probably yeah. have to have drawn it and it doesn't deal with the monsters. Yeah, 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 for sure. You're ready. Brain control. control. You're ready to draw. Brain control would be nice. Pot of greed, <laughs> I think, is what Nihiro needs. Oh, so James, could we hear that the the expert analysis again? What would be a good draw here? Brain control would be nice. <laughs> Pot of greed. Would... Brain control would be nice because he could take the thing, swing, and then main phase two failed to find the skill deck. Very nice. Why fail to find? You said in the dark position when you're up against skill dark, right? That's a very good point. Maybe he's just trying to base something here. That's not again, even, uh, unreasonable, right? You need a level 7. All the level 7s are bad. Just play dark position. Yeah, we need a level 7, but... Um, hey, come on. 
You drew the, but he drew the tornado for turn. I, this is weak. This is he's gonna lose. Sorry, sorry, Nahira, you're gonna lose. I mean, uh, you scapegoat when you meta. Yeah, but then you just treated it this turn. You could have just activated the scapegoat from hand or something. Okay, so what's the set then? I don't know. <laughs> Mirror uh, force. Mirror force. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. No. Could have dimension fusion for the serpent for the value, but yeah. Big value. Oh. Look out, well, we got there in the end. Nice match. Nice match, nice match. For sure. Fun to see people uh, bringing reasoning and monster gates. So we have the Here's... nano versus Poi. Oh, Pui. Yeah, Is that still it's... on winner side? Yep. Okay, cool. Uh, why can't I find it? I oh, maybe also it's don't not. see it. Maybe, maybe just... it's not up yet. They're scheduled to play in the bracket, but maybe they're uh, okay. Do you want to wait for them, or should we just move into another game? No, let's uh, keep let's... moving. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, WC against Electric Groove. Good. Taz Taz is Danji is still going on? I would watch Taz. They're okay. probably in the middle of the game already, though, because they were already going before. Okay, true. Sure. All right, all right. Um... Oh, this one's still winner's side. It's just behind. Let's check out Necromancy versus Yada. That one is. Oh no, I think that one. I think that one started fairly recently, because they were. But that one is. I can find it. I also cannot find that one. Yeah. What about the Duck Duck Goose against Snatch Steel? Okay, let's go. <laughs> um. Oh wait, no. The pre game is up right now. If you want to. Oh, for the other one. Okay. Yeah. No. Let's take a quick break, and uh, we'll come back with the game in a moment. Well, Pui, Pui is sure. hosting. Sorry, it's not the game. Is not. All right. So we are notes. back for game one of Pui versus the Nano. <laughs> and the avatar for Pui here is uh, 
Moxie's falling into the salt pit. Alright, of course. Okay, Nano playing a Chaos deck with Judgment. Yeah, it's like it's like their Chaos deck with Windblast Judgment. Um, I really yeah. like the deck. I I think Nano's deck has a lot of potential. You, you know, play Mask? no, he doesn't play Mask. Um, it's just a lot of control. Yeah, I'm not really a fan. I'm gonna be honest, but hey, Nano does his thing. Yeah, I mean, he got to the finals of Clash, so... Right, but I felt like in that match specifically, you really saw why the deck is, like, not that good. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. No, I, I mean, we saw it happen where it did seem like it was a lot of the deck choices kind of put Nano in some positions where had to make some not optimal decisions because of it, but... It's just a lot of like so, reactive cards that when you're down advantage, then. But it's. But I will say, okay. I mean, Pui, we can say is is clearly playing combo. Um, of great, some sort. Great cards to have yeah. against combo. Wing blast. And yeah, Solemn. like wing blast. All them are all insane in that. So. So Pui is given a lot of time to set up here. Nono applying some pressure, but not that much. Of course, the Koichi is going to change that. Yep, yep. The no 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 definitely on track to put pressure on Pui. And once again we can see the strength of the body that the Koichi brings. Strong body. So no no pausing a bit during the end step there. Cho choosing to Book of Moon the train. Yeah, so you're just cycling. I mean, Book is pretty bad in most combo matchups, so... Better to, to, rather, to try to find a, a duo or whatever you can. Absolute Goblin, not the best card to apply pressure, but definitely good for finding your best cards for the combo matchup. Yep, yeah, for sure. And... Misclicks a book. <laughs> Decides, might as well play it, I guess. Alright. But you gotta think that we should have been able to collect quite some resources here. There's a mind control, trying to cycle that for the Dekoichi. <laughs> Not punished for the main fist book of moon. Did they just forgot to flip it? I, I, I'm, I'm confused. They had no, already no, flipped no, it. They was going to... None of us going to set their book, but accidentally activated it and said, oh well, might as well. Oh. Right, so they booked it, flipped it, and then they accidentally played a second book, and then just set it again. And here we can definitely tell that Pui is a combo player. Flips the Dekoichi and then just sends it back, I don't need this anymore. Storm I'm going to trade for the Judgment. And uh, the first turn they did trade for MST on the first turn of the game, but we has managed to find a second tornado. But this is pretty Wind good. Going to be chained. Yeah, but it just depends if he already has the tools in hand to um, actually. And now, Nono shouldn't have any disruption, and it comes down to whether or not we can make something happen here. So that's the car before playing the reload. Wanted to keep one reload for five here. Well, I mean that's kind of interesting. I, I wonder if the card that got wind blasted was either important to the combo or uh, I mean Pui just knew that the juncture they were at was going to be their best 
time to combo off and now they're reloading for five but uh, reload is a tricky card because it's like you're just reloading for five you've thinned your deck a little bit but like i mean what are you hoping to draw here like a taiyu plus jar i guess but probably the taiyu is set right that could be the case sure that's often the play pattern i find so i guess if we're just recognizing that 2200 facing down 2400 we just felt okay this is time to go probably not surviving another turn premature for thunder dragon yeah i don't really understand this unless i'm about to if you're tunating anyway okay. no wow so we're going beat down Let's See, this go. just doesn't seem very good because I really doubt that. Um, Seems like things fell um, apart. <laughs> oh, I gotta go for it, right? Actually, actually, okay, unless you go Morphing tie, you main phase two. You were just trying to get the extra card in there? From Getting the, the card out of their hand. Well, yeah. no, but you, out of their you deck. Must the, uh, you must want to set the premature, right? Huh? No, I don't think they would have gone for this if they had the uh, jar. Yeah, I know what you're saying because yeah, you because yeah, you could also yeah, okay, this is over. Yeah, I don't really. All right, I mean... we see the formula. Game one, brick and I'm done. Game two, Scooby Doo. Let's. I don't really, again. I don't really get attacking there. I mean, I, it seems like they were losing anyway but <laughs> but i like... mean uh, they knew that they were going to die to the decoy in the sangan so they cleared the sangan with the thunder dragon makes sense what yeah i guess they were too low i think it just yeah, didn't we matter 2200 so that was 2400 so yeah sure i don't know the whole thing the whole thing was a little confusing to me I wonder if the wind blast was really clutch or not. Why is Pui saying high masses? Because he's insulting. watching today. Oh, okay. Because they're sick. Oh, okay. I always thought uh, I was confused. You do sound a lot. You have a very similar Murder accent. Pui. Sorry, you have a very Pui. similar accent to masses. <laughs> made ego problem all right there we go it's a bit fun to chat with the players <laughs> while uh, we're playing i kind of do i must admit i do enjoy that uh, i'm just looking at the bracket well these things are being yeah, sided sure. so both players still siding neither has submitted Yes. <laughs> Nono wisely declining to listen to the stream. <laughs> Not to be distracted by bad suggestions. Stream yeah, is on delay, just so everybody knows that we are not coaching any players directly. There, there is a slight delay, definitely. Yeah, we're definitely not coaching, but just Kui, if you are siding in, uh, you know, Royal Decree, I would put it in right now. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Too, late. Too late. Too anyway. late anyway. They already, they already influenced the match. We're already disqualified. Um, it's all right. Pui is a better jar player than me. I don't He's know. probably Actually, a better mind. jar player than most, right? Yeah, Not I'd, 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 like... I'd be fucking around with jar. Um... Muting us for the game? Wise decision. Wise decision. All right, let's see here. My stake could use some salt, got any. What's the turn one play? Set the jar, flip the Tayu after setting a few cards. Seems <laughs> easy enough to me, right? Yeah, that's, uh, that's that's our coaching. It's like, listen, if you have jar Tayu, I would just go for it. Um, oh, oh. Ah, uh, okay, so trying to find the book of Tayu here. 34 cards. I don't like those. Three hits. <laughs> I don't like those. 
But I don't know if it's game three. Like they already have all their. Oh, come on, we, we don't know how to play Jar. Let's, I let's do know how to play Jar. Pui on this one. You Long do. Control 2021. Uh, but. Oh okay. They found it. Here game we go. over. This is why Pui is playing in the tournament, and we're just sitting here. Yeah, because they hard to... destruction into fucking one. I think Rock anyway. Bombardment is like my least favorite Jar deck card. I think Rock Bombardment is kind of cool. It's just like a cool card. I think it's not very good, but it's just cool. Royal Decree and being destroyed no idea. by rocks. <laughs> it's from a starter deck, I believe. It's like one of the... It's a, it's a very right. obscure... If they're doing, if they're doing this... Oh. It's a very Ooh. obscure goat format card. Wait, what's going on? They prenated one back, so they'd have another card for reload. Now they're just going to keep trying to find stuff, but... But the right. actual stuff they can find here is kind of slim because they need to get the cyber jar. Well, I guess they have book type, but they need to. Book of Moon. Good start. Set four, Tayu. Oh, reload. But I don't really. I don't really Why do get you... it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Because, because like. You can also just draw spell reproduction and Tayu. Sure. Yeah. I guess that's true. Maybe maybe I don't know how to play the jar. <laughs> maybe I'm wrong. I don't think you generally stop until you have to. I, I'm just along for the ride. Let's go. I'm, Let's I'm a control player. Here. I'm a control well, player, Bomb right? I'm, I'm, I'm going for guaranteed wins. I'm not, I'm not reloading and crossing my fingers. Apparently I was wrong. Rock Bombardment is from... The Lost Millennium? Really? It must be a mm -hmm. short print then. I... I've been going through my GOAT cards a lot recently, and I have not come across a Rock Bombardment yet. Dude, maybe after this match, they're going to go up in value. Please thinking here. Head of the Phoenix, putting Tyre on top, we have to assume. Maybe. Yeah, I guess yeah, so. There we go. Um, and now up, some up. card to draw? Right? <laughs> So once you're... Like, why would you... I mean, I just don't really know why you would assume that... The... Jar is gonna last, you know? I mean, um, maybe once it flips, they want to have the, the tie in hand because we set the premature. Well, no. It, well, it's also if they tie you the jar, then they can't... Then they have to solemn the tie you. Like if they just if they just set the tie, you flip the jar, and they can saw them the jar. I think we're gonna see a wing blast oh, yeah, here. Previous? All right. Oh, but... we're ready. Chaos sorcerer. Are oh. We attacking. Looks like Agro we're attacking. Time. Agro time. But is that good? I mean, if you you have okay, a lot of so columns. Okay, so the set stuff. cards are perhaps Book of Moon premature, with a tie on top. No, the premature is gone. Um. Sure. So perhaps not. <laughs> I think you guys should just stop trying to comment. Take this match up. <laughs> what? It is going awful. <laughs> this is going great. What do you mean? This is we're, we're this doing is a high level here. commentary. Also, <laughs> no sure. feather. I'm sorry, but just like praying with your reloads is not an effective strategy. Wait, uh, why did you say that the premature is gone? It's not. It is. <laughs> it's is in gone. the grave. That now, now we're in bad commentary territory. It's Wait, yes, it's literally oh, the first card. It, it is sorry. Oh, sorry. My bad. Cancelled. Uh, but but yeah. Now I'm thinking that Pui is in a bad spot. That's my that's my top level analysis. Pui is in a bad spot. Yeah, unless Nano literally has no wing blast, no solemn set, and. Who he has like Jar Tayu then? Yeah, it needs to be Cyber Jar. <laughs> the needle from Nono. <laughs> I love it. All right, let's see the miracle. Scully, are you praying for Pui or are you? I don't waste my prayers. Are you critiquing us? <laughs> <laughs> Choose one. Choose I, your path. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna waste my prayers. <laughs> All right. Let's see. 
So we lead with the true nade, right? Well, I guess Two true nade left. Storm has been used along with the first true nade. Let me see why you sad. Oh, that's a dust shoot. That's a good card against combo, but he might not have any monsters also. There's dust shoot's good card. There's not that many more monsters. Uh... Taking a look is just useful. Oh, there we go. You just want to see. Mind control can buy some time. Decree is good. Yes. Please pronouns are she, she, her. So Definitely. Let's keep that in mind. I don't, I don't know. Whatever. I don't know if I messed it up, but either way, let's be on top of it. Um, yeah, I try because because I know, but every now and then I slip, right? I did not remember that, but now we know. Um... My control is going to clear this sorcerer. And, then and... we set the decree and we try to go off next turn, right? Oh, wow, that's very aggressive. By go off next turn, you mean hope to top deck Sabajar? Exactly. Okay. So, please set the card. You would have to assume that is the decree. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a BLS or a sorcerer, either or, another sorcerer. Right, and I was going to say. Choo this choo, is... let's go. This is lethal. Yeah. Not and really much. The jar says GG. If yeah. in the towel. Brutal. Not one. a lot the jar deck can do to stop that. And plans definitely derailed there for Pui. I don't know if it's like coming down. I, I don't. I don't know if other people have a sort of like righteous justice in seeing the combo decks lose. I don't really. I like to see a combo deck win, but you know there definitely is a slight like. Yeah. What I like yeah. to see is when the guy who didn't come prepared for the combo deck loses. Sure. Because sure. man, when I play against someone and I can just tell that this person has. Can't beat combo. Let's go over now to Big Llama.